So let's get started um, with this presentation, uh, Power Up with Clouds and Pipelines. So um, I I'm guessing or assuming that most of you have probably heard about a CI CD by now. Um, you know, it it's this concept that helps you to release faster and faster and, and deploy your applications faster and more reliably. So most organizations nowadays have pretty much adopted CI CD as part of their core business processes. Now, today I want to show you uh, how you can integrate your CI CD pipelines directly inside of your Kubernetes cluster. And this can be done with Tekton. Tekton is a cloud native CI CD framework uh, that, and it uses tasks and, and pipelines to, uh, to, to build and to build your, your CI CD pipelines. Now, I, I couldn't help, but, uh, you know, I was like, oh, clouds and, and pipes and, you know, and I, I decided to do a Super Mario Brothers theme talk because, hey, why not? <laughs> you know, <laughs> might as well have fun if we're learning something new, right? Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, Tekton today. This is really the focus of my talk. Uh, just before I get started, let me just find my window. Uh, all right, and let me get out of the way. There you go. So hi, my name is Joel. Uh, I am based in Ottawa, Canada. Uh, I'm French Canadian. That's the charming little accent. And that's also why it's Joel and Joel. So <laughs> uh, I work as a developer advocate for the Red Hat OpenShift platform. Um, and, and if you ever want to get in touch for, uh, with me, uh, if you have any questions about, about Tekton, about CICD, about OpenShift, uh, Kubernetes, or you know, just uh, about Canada, <laughs> why not? Uh, we, the easiest way is always to reach me on Twitter. So that's Joel with, with two underscores. It's like the worst Twitter handle ever. Uh, but it, yeah. Uh, Joel underscore underscore Lord, um, easy to find there, and I usually answer really, really quickly. Also, you know, if you enjoyed this session, feel free to uh, tweet using the hashtag DevConCZ. Um, you know, let people know that you're here and that these events are, even though they're virtual, they're still happening and, and people are there and attending. So uh, feel free to use those. Uh, that's the easiest way to reach me. Okay, so I'm <laughs> Super Mario Brother rules, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of old school. Um, I'm also monitoring the chat um, somewhere right here. So if you see me, I kind of looking at my screen there. Uh, that's what's going on. So if you have any questions, feel free to just ask them during the presentation. Um, and I'll, I'll try to answer them, or, or I'll just let you know if it's addressed later on. So CICD, uh, what is CICD? Just in case you haven't heard about it, uh, it introduces ongoing automation and continuous monitoring throughout the life cycle of apps from integration and testing phases to delivery and deployment. So basically, it's a way just to, um, actually, I do have a picture here. Um, it, it's just a way to make sure that you're continually, continuously building your application, making sure that it's running all the tests that it needs and that you can, um, you can create the, those images and that you can deploy those easier and faster and more quickly and more reliably to your servers. It's also great to, um, you know, to, to build those images as you're, as you're working and as soon as you can. So as soon as code is merged, so that you don't have merge conflicts and it helps with uh, if you need to show some of that content to your, your product management team or to your customers, or if, if you need to um, share that with a QA team, you know, making sure that you're building faster and quicker um, and, and regularly really helps with sharing that information. So continuous integration, when we're talking about that, usually it's uh, the automation process for developers. It's usually what happens um, or what can happen on, on your local machine. Um, I'm a JavaScript developer. I, I, that's what I've been doing for years now. Um, sorry, no Java here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I run all of those tests and as part of my application building processes. So that's kind of the continuous integration part. Uh, but it really helps with the, the merging and, and trying to merge that code um, as often as you can into the, the Git repository, and it helps to avoid those conflicts. Um, when we're talking about CD um, in, in the context of CI CD, uh, CD can either mean continuous delivery or continuous deployment. Uh, let's not be too picky about the, the vocabulary here, but um, generally what we're, we're talking about is um, about the further stages of the, of the uh, application or of the deployment of the application. So continuous delivery is really when you're, you're trying to build that, that image. Um, and then continuous deployment is really when you push that image into the server. Uh, but they're both uh, oftentimes referred to as continuous, uh, continuous delivery. Or continuous disaster, I absolutely love that. And I might steal that from you, Pavel. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Now, Tekton is a cloud-native CI/CD solution. So what does that mean exactly? Well, or actually, I mean, cloud-native means a lot of stuff. Like, it, it, it's kind of overloaded and... Um, it took me a while to actually understand what it means. Like there's so many potential definitions, uh, but in the context of what we're looking at today, in the context of CI/CD, uh, really what we're looking at when we, we talk about cloud native CI/CD is that those are applications that will run in containers and it, that they're kind of self-contained uh, inside their container. They can be deployed, they can be, um, and, and everything will run inside of a container. So uh, all of your pipeline, uh, all of the, the, the operations that are happening during your pipeline or throughout your pipeline will happen inside containers. So that makes it more reliable, more reproducible, uh, so you can get a lot of more um, out of it. We're also talking about serverless, uh, not in the sense of uh, AWS Lambda or Azure Functions, but more in the sense of no central place to manage all of your um, all of your pipelines. So really, we're looking at um, you know not having one person that is responsible of of managing uh, your your uh, Bamboo instance, for example. So maybe you know being able to make it available to all of the developers inside of your system so that's really what we're talking about when we talk about serverless in this context and devops making sure that we have devops practices built and in, built inside of it um so once again it's it's kind of similar it has, has a little bit of overlap here but just making sure that um you know the developers are are can be in charge of their own pipelines and and maintain, maintaining them so that they can actually um, take care of all of that um, without the need for an ops team. So this is where Tekton comes into play. It comes in here to help us. And the vision of Tekton is really to build this system of, of pipelines, which are composable. So it uses different building blocks to create those pipelines. It's declarative. We're using YAML to describe all of your files. It is reproducible as well. So because we're using containers and because um, we're using um, composable tasks so we can use those tasks and reuse those tasks as well um, and it's also cloud native so it, everything is built with cloud native in mind all right so let's get started and the old schools old school people like me will absolutely know what this image is <laughs> blowing into the nest cartridge um all right so let's get started. Um, and, and for this presentation, I want it to be a little bit more hands-on. So I'm actually going to build my uh, some tasks, and we're, we're going to try to deploy that. Um, of course, we never know how it's going to work. <laughs> Live demos, right? Uh, but hopefully, uh, I did my sacrifices to the demo gods this morning, and, and it should potentially maybe work. So we'll see. Uh, so getting started with uh, Tekton, the first thing that you'll need is some Kubernetes cluster, some sort of Kubernetes cluster. Uh, if you have OpenShift, that's great. You can use it with OpenShift. Uh, if you're using OpenShift, though, and I just want to mention that um, there is an operator that is available to you, uh, which is called the uh, OpenShift Pipelines, which is built on top of Tekton, uh, kind of in the same way that uh, OpenShift is built on top of Kubernetes, right? So it kind of gives you Tekton on steroids. For this presentation, I'm going to use Minikube. I'm not going to run everything locally. Um, and then you need to install the Tekton CRDs. Uh, it's really relatively simple, a relatively painless uh, process. There is one line that you just can copy from the, the documentation. It installs everything for you, and then you're ready to go. And we'll use the TKN CLI tool. Uh, technically, you don't need to use it, uh, but it really, really makes it a lot easier to manage your Tekton pipelines by using it. All right, so uh, the links are there. I'm going to share all the links at the end through uh, one single link. Uh, but yeah, Minikube, uh, where you can find it, and the Tekton CRDs and CLI uh, in the Getting Started, started Guide from tekton.dev. All right, so the first basic building block that we can use for building our Tekton pipelines is, is called a task. So a task is, is just one thing that you want your pipeline to do. And in here, what we're going to do, right, we've got this, this um, Super Mario Brothers uh, welcome screen, and we need to push start. So that's, that's what our task will be today. So, so that's, uh, I'm going to take some, some kind of basic examples, but you'll see how we can build on top of that eventually. All right. So 
if you want to build your own task, this is pretty much what you'll do. It uses the same syntax as any Kubernetes object. So API version, it uses tecton.dev slash v1 beta 1. Uh, it, yes, it is still in beta. It actually recently came out of alpha into beta. Um, so that is, well, recently, it's been a few, few months, I guess, already. Ah, time flies. Um, we're going to create an object of kind task. We're going to use some metadata so you could put in some labels so that you can find those uh, throughout your, your cluster. We're going to give it a name, and this name will be called start game. And then we uh, have our spec, and in our spec, uh, we have a bunch of steps. So steps are different operations that you're going to perform. Each step is executed in their own container. So we're, you'll see here, you'll recognize here the syntax, which is exactly the same syntax as you're using uh, for your images inside, or <clears throat> sorry, for your images inside of your your pods. So your task runs inside of a single pod, and all of your steps will run into uh, inside different uh, containers. So let's take a look at what this actually looks like. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger because I'm seems like it's not very large. There it is. And let's open up a uh, code editor. And here it is. And where is it? OK. Nope. It's hiding. Oh, no, there it is. Whoa. OK. So um, let's create a new file. Why is it? Uh, it's touch one.yaml. And let's see if I can bring my. Wow, I'm off for a good start, right? Um, that is not what I want. I'm almost there. Please bear with me. And new file one.yaml. I know you can't see. Don't worry. I'm just going to do that, bring it back. And I need to cheat. I need to have <laughs> another one open here. And OK, I'm almost there. Oh, come on, really? This is killing me. Code done. OK, so uh, where is my other editor? Boom, there it is. Perfect. So we're going to create our first uh, API version. Uh, so tecton.dev, as I've mentioned, uh, v1 beta 1. And you can install the Tecton, uh, the uh, Tecton extension, which is great. Um, it lets you build, like you, you can use a lot of uh, syntax, and it, it will check for for um, yeah the syntax and all the stuff. Uh, so we're going to build an object of kind task. For some reason I can't get it to <laughs> do the auto completion uh, metadata. So I'm off for a good start. This is not going to end well. Uh, okay, name start game. So we're gonna have our first um, our first task. It's gonna you know be called start game. We have our spec. In our spec, we're gonna have a series of steps, and that's the only required uh, element for your uh, spec inside of your task. And in here, we'll have an array. The first one will be called uh, press start because that's what we need to do to start Super Mario. And we'll use we'll use the image Alpine uh, Alpine three dot one. 3.12, I think it is. See, that's why I have this other A letter. <laughs> uh, <laughs> OK, uh, our command, uh, what do we do? Once this container starts, we're going to run slash bin slash sh. Out of habit, I do uh, bash, but uh, sh for Alpine. And then the arguments that we're going to pass, uh, dash c. And then echo, uh, I guess we'll just say uh, starting game. Starting game. Okay, so just, just a simple task. The only thing that it'll do is that it'll just echo something out there. Uh, so this is saved now. So I now have my TKN tool installed. Uh, before I actually use that, I'm going to need to apply this file. So kubectl apply-f1.yaml. And there it is. So it did create our, our first task. So that's good. And now that we have our task, we can do TKN task. Um, TKN, ta TKN task LLS to see the list of tasks. So we can see that we've got a start game task. It's 15 seconds old. Uh, so that's all good. So I can actually use TKN task start to actually trigger that, that task. And it was called start game. There it is. And it started. Uh, of course, I 
always forget the dash dash show log uh, argument. And I'm too lazy to copy and paste this. So I'll just do uh, show log. So now my task is started. It actually created a task run, uh, which is the actual execution of the task. And this one runs inside of its own pod. It starts a container, which has the Alpine image. And well, it does that echo statement. Uh, it's actually it actually ran faster than it took me to actually explain what's going on in here. So you can see that it's really fast, uh, just to get that image up and running and to echo that statement. So that's what we needed to do for now. Cool. So uh, yeah, <laughs> level up. So we we just managed to do our first task. So that's, that's you know it, it was kind of a hello world esque example, but still you know we we've got something. So that's see those steps and and as i mentioned you have all of those steps and you can reuse those steps or you can you can have more than one step and that's typically what would happen inside of your uh of your your task right uh if you need to run a task for to run some tests well first of all you'll you'll need to uh install the dependencies and then you'll need to run a test suite uh so that's that's two different steps so let's see if we can do two steps so when you open up super mario once again the first step is to press start and then you need to select the number of players so that's what we're going to do here uh, by adding a second step inside of um inside of our uh, uh of our task sorry so uh, in here, I got, I'm just going to take that same task, but I'm going to add um, the, the press start, um, and then I'm, I'm going to add the select player step, uh, which is just going to echo something again. We're just kind of faking something here. So why don't I open up my code editor again, if I can find it. Uh, let me just uh, create that two.yaml file. And where is it? All right. So I'm going to start with this. Um, I don't know why this doesn't work. Anyways. Uh, 2.yaml, and we're going to add a first step here. So the first step will be select player. Is that players? Yeah, I guess players, plural. Um, and then we're going to use an Alpine image again. So, it, whoops, image Alpine 3.12, and command, it's going to be very similar slash bin slash sh, and we're going to take some arguments. And I know that you're all hoping that I'm going to fail. Um, if you miss yes, no style flags with shell commands, an idea could be to define an alias that already contains a flag. Yes, that's actually a very good idea, Eric. Um, I should definitely do that. Um, that's, that's actually very smart. Um, selecting players, OK. Also, I'm glad that at least one person is paying attention. <laughs> All right, QCTL apply dash f uh, 2.yaml. This will overwrite our original task. So it just says configured uh, and instead of, of created, because I've reused the same name. Um, and now I have TKN task ls. I can see that uh, my task was created three minutes ago, but it's now changed. So I can now do TKN uh, task start, start game. And <laughs> yeah. all right, uh, <laughs> so I can't help it. All right, so <laughs> all right, there's three people paying attention. All right, show logs. Yes. Uh, okay. So uh, so far so good. So selecting players, starting games, and that seems like this is working. So you can see how we can um, build on top and, and create those different steps. Uh, interesting fact that task will run until all of these steps are successfully completed or one fails. So they will be uh, executed one after the other. Uh, so this is what happened. Each one of those has been executed in their own container as well. OK, let's, let's make it a little bit more complex. Let's add parameters. And let's see who knows what this screen is out of curiosity. <laughs> Bonus point if you can figure it out. Uh, so let's add parameters to our task now. So one of the goals is to make sure that we can make those tasks re reusable as much as we can. Uh, if you have a git clone task, you'll want to be able to specify the, the repository so that you can reuse that git clone task in all of your different pipelines. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every time, right? So this is how you will uh, do your, your make your tasks more uh, reusable. You'll use parameters to do that. So in here, what I'm I, I'm doing, I'm adding uh, inside of the parameters section. I'm adding a parameter that will specify the number of players, 
and then I'll be able to inject that value inside of my container. So I'm going to use params.players to display the number of players that we've specified in our uh, parameter here. So code editor again, where are you? Uh, there you are. Let's add this extra file, 3.yaml. Um, we're going to start from the same task again. And three. OK, so in our spec, we're going to add some parameters. So params. And the first one will be a name, players. Nope, just players. Thank you. Uh, you can add a description. Uh, that can be useful, especially if you're using the command line. You're going to see that in just a few seconds. Uh, so number of players. Um, Pavel, I think you are correct. That screen was the game genie. Um, default, default to one player. And uh, this will be of type string. So you need to specify uh, the type is either a string or array. Uh, and yeah, so we've got our parameter now. And instead of selecting players, we will say selected and we'll inject params dot params dot players selected one player and okay let's not mess around with plural <laughs> singular all right uh, please bear with me so um, uh, do 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 where it is where it is okay so now I'm gonna apply that file again three dot yaml and let's start this task again so tkn start don't forget the show log uh, don't no tkn task start Star game, dash dash show log. Ha. All right. So you can see now that it's asking me, and I'm sorry, my terminal inside of my slides is not really friendly with uh, <laughs> color codes, fancy codes. Uh, but you can see now that I'm being asked for the value for that parameter players um, of type string. Default is one. I can either accept the, um, the default value or just change it to two. So um, value has been changed to two. And it almost worked. Almost, almost. Let me just uh, change. I think that's with the, um, uh, oh, I'll need to, uh, kubectl, apply dash f3. Um, with that parenthesis that I've added for, um, for the player s, uh, I think that's what caused the error there. OK, so um, well, um, not found, not found. Hmm. Well, you can see that um, what happens when a step fails. So that's that's a good first step. Um, what happened? Um, hmm, that's funny. Um, and I think I understand why I'm having issues. This is actually running in demo. This is there. This is there. Let me just take this. And as I said, I'm allowing myself to cheat and to just copy and paste from a working example that I know I have. <laughs> All right, uh, let's give that a try. 3.yaml. Oh, really? It's one of those days. It's Friday, isn't it? Yeah. Um, all right, so TKN, task, start, show log, YAML engineering. OK, waiting for logs. Seems like it might be work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so even with my original demo, which I don't know, used to work. But anyways, you kind of get the point. Um, I'm not sure why it's not cooperating right now, but let's not spend too much time trying to do some live debugging here. Um, so what I can do is that actually pass that string, uh, pass that a parameter. I can also add it as, a, um, uh, as an additional parameter. Uh, so I can say players equals two. And now it won't ask me for the question because I've actually specified it directly as part of the CLI. So why is that one working? Oh, I think it has to do with those ANSI codes. Like it just doesn't like the, like it's, yeah. Okay. 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 So, <laughs> so you can specify it as part of the command line and it works, um, you know, and, and it doesn't work. Yeah, exactly. I sent the semicolon 78, yada, yada. Um, 
So, you know, I, I was trying to be fancy and, and do a terminal inside of my slide deck, I guess. <laughs> That's its downsides. Uh, another cool thing that you can do, and now I never remember the syntax of that one, but I believe it's dash dash use uh, param defaults. Uh, so there's a plural that, oh, there you go. Uh, so that one will automatically use all the default values that you've put in. So selecting one player starting game. So you can see how that parameter already I have a task that can do two different things. Um, it can, well, you know, based on the number of players, uh, and I've been able to reuse that task to get different outputs because I've, I'm putting in those parameters. OK, so uh, let's move on. Uh, let's make this a little bit more complex, and let's add some pipelines. So what is a pipeline? Well, a pipeline is uh, a collection of tasks, basically. Uh, so you'll just chain up different tasks. Uh, so if we look at this chart directly from the Tekton documentation, we've got this pipeline. And in here, you've got uh, four different tasks. So task A starts, and then uh, B and C will then run uh, once A is completed. And then task D is, is ran after B and C is completed. Each one of those tasks will have their different steps. So this is what a pipeline looks like. Let's try to see what it looks like in YAML. Well, you will have your task. Um, I'll add an additional task in here uh, inside of my uh, cluster that will be uh, defeat Bowser, because that's our ultimate goal, right? We want to defeat Bowser. So, <laughs> so uh, the, the, the ultimate thing that it will do is that it'll echo battling browser. It'll sleep for one second and say that you won. All right, I know, I know. I could have been a little bit more elaborate with my game, but hey, you know, <laughs> just trying to demonstrate a concept here. So. For building our pipeline, what we will have is uh, our same type of syntax, API version, uh, kind of object pipeline, some metadata. Um, we'll call it play Mario. And then we'll have, you know, inside of our spec, we'll have all of our different tasks. So our first task will be start, which is the start game uh, task that we've used. We can see it in the task reference here. And the second task will be uh, called win, which will be in reference to the defeat Bowser task that was uh, just added right here. Uh, also notice that inside of my first task, I'm specifying the parameters that I want, right? So I can actually put that in. Um, I can put in the the the, the um, number of players directly inside of my task reference here. So let's take a quick look at this. Um, where is my? <laughs> I'm having a hard time with my code editor. There it is. So let's create a new file for that YAML. And we'll create that second task here. Um, so tekton.dev slash if you want beta one, that's good, kind, task. Bugs me that I don't have my autocomplete anymore. Metadata uh, will have a name. I think I've removed it. And I'll tell you a little secret later on. Uh, not default, defeat, defeat, Bowser. And I always type browser. Yeah. Okay. Uh, spec. We'll have some steps, and the first step will have a name, and the name will also be defeat Bowser, because uh, that's good enough. Um, and then we'll use Alpine once again, because we want this to be blazing fast. And command. Command slash bin slash sh and some arguments. Wow, I really can't type today. Dash C and echo battling Bowser and N sleep one and N echo U1. Whoo. <laughs> That's hard. OK, so I've got my task now. Um, let's also go ahead and build our pipeline. So 5.yaml, because I'm not feeling fancy for naming things today. Um, so we'll have the same type of thing, so API version. This is also tekton.dev v1 beta 1. Uh, we'll have an object of kind pipeline. Oh, was it there? Was it? Was it? Oh, no, it's just my Kubernetes. Oh. Oh, for a second there, I thought I would be able to use that autocomplete. Metadata, we'll give it a name. We'll call it Play Mario, and we'll have our spec. It will have some tasks, tasks, tasks. Come on, tasks. Ha. First one will be start. And this is the name for our task, but not uh, the actual original task. 
which is specified here. So the reference will be um, for name start game. Okay, so I'm actually referring to that, that specific task. Um, and then I'll have my parameters and it will have name, players, and value. And don't forget it's a string. <sighs> okay, uh, value. <laughs> Why are you messing with me today? Um, and the second task, second task will also have a name, it will be called win, and it will just have the task reference uh, in here, name, defeat, <laughs> defeat Bowser. And I think this will be my last uh, typing because I just can't do it today. So kubectl, unless you really want to see me uh, having errors and typos all the time, apply dash F uh, four, and we can also kubectl apply dash f5, 5.yaml. And let's clear this. So tkn task list. We can now see that we have two different tasks. Um, also, it helps me to keep track on how much time I have left. Uh, <laughs> tkn, uh, no, not, yes, tkn uh, pipeline, pipeline ls. We can see the uh, list of pipelines. This one was never run, so we see that um, last run does not exist. So let's actually start it. Pipeline, start, play, Mario. Uh, there it goes. <laughs> Guess what? Show log. OK. <laughs> so now it started. So what it's doing is actually starting that first task, creating that first pod, um, selecting one player. Oops. And we see that something odd just happened here. So it kind of started that first pod um, with the first task. And it said selecting one player. And, and then this, this, like the second step of that first task was starting game, uh, but battling browser and U1 kind of appeared in the middle. So that's kind of weird, isn't it? Well, uh, not really, because that's kind of what I asked it to do. Um, so the task sequence here um, is not a glitch. It's actually what I've told it to do. So um, you right here. Here, you see that you can actually specify the order of our tasks. And this is not what I did not do in this case. So what I can do here is to add this run after. By using that, I can actually specify uh, when this task will run. So let's actually go back and change, uh, change this here. Um, and I'll just create a new task, 6.yaml. Um, I said I wouldn't do it anymore, right? But that 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 one should be fairly easy. Um, and I'll make sure that win will run after, and this one will take an array, and I have to refer to the name of the task here. So start, which is in reference to that. So it will actually run after the first task is successfully completed. So cube, kubectl apply dash F6. And there it is. And now we can actually uh, do TKN pipeline, start, play, Mario. And there it is. <laughs> and there it is. Um, boy, it's really, I can't, I can't help it. Now we have selecting one player, starting game. And now the second pod is triggered, battling Bowser, and then you won. So there was that little pause between the two there. Good, so now that you can specify the order, now you can do things like making sure that you have reusable parallel tasks. You can uh, do stuff like cloning a repository and then installing the required dependencies. Um, and then you can also have par parallel tasks, which is kind of interesting. Uh, let's take a look at this task here and I'm, I'm not gonna type it, I'm just gonna go uh, through it here. Uh, so very similar to the other ones, so API version. Um, and then in the spec section, I have one parameter. So this task will, this task will be called collect. And the parameter is object. What should I collect? Um, it will default to coins, because that's what uh, Mario usually collects, right? Um, coins. Uh, but he can also collect stars and, and mushrooms and, and a lot of different things. So we'll, we're going to try to make that task a lot more reusable. And then for our uh, step, it will uh, do, have a single step, which will uh, just do an echo statement when, once again. It will pick a random number between one and five, and then it will sleep for that number of seconds. 
Uh, you'll see why that's important. And then it will echo the number of objects and the type of objects that it actually collected. In my pipeline, I'm going to reuse that task twice. So this is where you can get those really powerful tasks and you can reuse them. So in here, as you can see that I have a reference to um, the task called collect. Um, and that is to collect some coins. So I'm just using the default values here. And the second task uh, has a reference to collect once again. So that has a reference to that same task. But in here, I've changed the parameter to be a value mushroom in here. So it will be able to collect both coins and mushrooms in the same pipeline by using the exact same task. Uh, both of these will start uh, will run after start. And then the uh, win task will run after both of these uh, collect tasks has been executed. So you can see how we can use the run after with the multiple arguments here. So why don't I go ahead and, oh, this is actually uh, something very interesting as well. You have the Tecton pipeline, and I think I've disabled it. I, I think that's what happened. Um, but you can see a screenshot here of my task. And the Tecton pipelines, uh, VS Code extension is very useful to visualize what's going on inside of your task because it'll actually give you a preview of that pipeline. So that's a very, very cool feature that you can have in here. All right, five minutes left, so I'm actually going to go a little bit faster here. kubectl uh, apply-f, uh, I believe I'm at seven now. Um, of course, it's not there because uh, I haven't created it. Um, let's just copy it from here. Uh, wow, that, that time check just stressed me out. Um, all right, uh, do, 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 do. kubectl apply-f7.yaml. And we now have everything. So tkn pipeline, pipeline, start, play. Here, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. There you go. All right, so now it's going to do uh, all of that stuff. It's going to do uh, run those two tasks. So first, it starts by selecting a player, doing that first task. Then it executes both of the tasks simultaneously. And it will wait for both of those tasks. So that first one took only one second because it slept for one second while it was collecting that one coin. The second one also slept for one second. Um, and then you have the battling browser. If I ran this, uh, I'd get different numbers. But it will always be executed in the same number thanks to my run after. All right, there's also a task catalog that is available to you. So obviously, you won't want to do some echo statements. You'll want to do some, some stuff that is a little bit more uh, interesting. So GitHub, um, there's or check out for the Tekton Hub. Um, it is available on GitHub. There is a bunch of different tasks that you can use out of the box. Pipeline resources, they're still in alpha, so I'm not going to spend time here. Um, what is used nowadays is more workspaces. Workspaces is a shared volume between all of the different containers that you have, or all of the different um, containers that you have running inside of your pod. So you can share that information through a persistent volume. They can be used both in the tasks and in the pipeline. Um, yeah, and real world examples. Well, you know, you can pretty much do whatever you want now that you have your 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 tasks. Um, and just by using reusable uh, tasks here, you can, you know, clone your repository, perform some unit tests with npm install, npm test, um, compile your code if you're doing some Java stuff uh, with, what is it, Maven? I, I have no clue what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> then you can build your image, and then you can finally deploy that image to a cluster by using OC or kubectl. So all of that can be done throughout the various tasks um, inside of uh, your system. So uh, just a quick recap of Cloud Native CI CD framework. So Tekton uh, all lives inside of your Kubernetes cluster. It uses steps, tasks, pipeline, and workspaces. Um, I'm absolutely, um, you know, I, I love Tekton, so I, I speak way too much about it, as you can see. Uh, also, uh, I'll let you know a little secret. There's a book coming up sometime soon. Um, so, you know, check me out on Twitter if you want more information about that. Uh, so thank you very much for being here. Thank you for attending. I'll have a few minutes for uh, questions, I believe. And uh, yeah, that's the one link that you're where you'll find all the information. So easy URL to slash pipes and clouds. Thank you.